How is it going everyone? So I have been, for the past couple days, I've just been playing around with the use effect, just trying to make sure I really understand it because I feel like it's one of those hooks that I just neglected really understanding how it works under the hood. And I still don't feel like I even understand it because it's just so confusing. Um, So I, I made a little prototype that's more like reflective of what use effect was meant to be used for. And I have a local WebSocket ser server running on port 5000. And I have a React application that's connecting to that. Like so, let me zoom in a little bit for you all. And what this is doing, this, this application, when I click on this ping button, it sends a message to the socket server. And that socket server is going to return with a hundred pong messages uh, across the web socket. And then it finally finishes with a done message. So what happens is the client sends a ping, it gets back a hundred pongs, and then it gets back a done from the server. And then I print out, um, 100 Pong messages, and then I also print out the count. Um, every time I get a Pong, let me show you the code real quick. It's pretty straightforward, and I have some stuff commented out because I want to explain some things. So you see here, there's a, there's a button here. When I click it, it calls a ping function, which emits a ping message. And I believe if I were to open up, I have it, this in another file for some reason. So this is, this is like a WebSocket thing I use for a game, but I just hack some stuff on real quick to kind of demonstrate this. When I get that ping message, I loop over from one to each of the two, which is about 100, and I increment a count, like so, and then I emit 100 Pong messages with a GG message, and then I finally emit a done message. So all of those should hopefully come in order to the client, and then finally I get a done message. And what the React component is doing is it listens for every time it gets a Pong response, it just increments a count. So it has like a, a count variable up here, which I have set to zero. And every time I get a Pong message, I just increment count, and then I print out Pong. So that's what you're seeing over here. It says 100 Pong. That's just it printing out the console log that you're seeing here. Okay. Um, and then I have another effect that is basically creating a listener for the done message. And when I get that done message, I'm also printing out count. So I want to share with you some things that I find confusing with use effect. This is really just like a giant leaky abstraction, in my opinion. Um, and you really have to understand how JavaScript and React works under the hood to be able to correctly get that count. So let's say you wanted to do something with the message when you got that done uh, response. Or you wanted to do something with your state that you've been kind of incrementing the moment you get that done response. Well, with this approach, you can't do that because if you look here, it prints out zero. Even though it says 100 on the page, it's printing out zero. So due to how React and JavaScript works, like this count variable is an old stale value, right? This is zero. And then the component never actually re-renders and this never gets updated until some point in the future. So when I get the done message, React still prints out zero here because it hasn't, hasn't had time to like re-render the component, rerun the effects. Um, and kind of create a new closure, which gives us access to a new count variable. Um, so one little thing you can do to fix this is, I mean, this ESLint is, is warning you about this, that you're trying to access count, but count isn't actually in the dependency array. So you add that to the dependency array because you follow ESLint rules because you're a good coder. And then you go back to the UI and you go ahead and click ping and notice that it prints out 30 down here. So again, like you wanted to have that 100 in your React component when that done message comes in because you know you already got 100 Pong messages. Like you verified you get the Pong messages first. So why is this printing out 30? Okay, so it's like super confusing in my opinion that this thing still prints out 30 even though I've told it like, hey, like this effect needs to recreate and you know clean up and recreate every time count changes. So you would think at the very end after the, the last increment to 100, you think this thing would have, you know, cleaned up and rebound, but I guess the way it works is that it's like a race condition. So one way that you can get access to the actual value of count is, this is super hacky, let me show you something real quick. If you wanted to get the real value of count because of the way like state works in React and it's like asynchronous, you actually need to do something like this, which I probably don't even recommend doing. I'll say like actual count. And I will just go ahead and print out actual count. And then, of course, since you're calling the setter, you have to return the same value unless you do want to change it. 
So this will actually print out 100. Let's go back to the UI refresh. I'll click ping. Notice that it does print out the proper value. But obviously like this code is just, it's just ugly. Like this is such a hacky approach to get the current latest value of count that I would never recommend doing this. Okay, so you, you might think, okay, then what do you need to do so that I know can, I can actually like run some logic when I've gotten that done message and all of my state is like the latest and greatest value of what it should be. Okay, so another approach is you could basically say, well, let's just have count be a, a ref. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this. I'll say use ref, and I'll just go ahead and call this count ref. And every time we get a message, I'm gonna go ahead and just increment the current like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and console log the current of that value. Okay, so don't do this little hack thing I showed you. And then this obviously, since you're having this reference a reference, <laughs> since this axis is a ref, you know this will always have the latest value. You don't have to do any dependency array um, garbage. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put current here, which count ref current. So this will work. This will actually print out um, the value. So if I click on ping, notice that it prints out pong, I print out 100. This works fine, but now look at the UI. It's not updating, right? There's, it's still stuck at zero. And the reason for this is because obviously when you modify a ref, it doesn't redraw the component, doesn't re-render the component. So then you have to like add a hack to basically tell React that, hey, like I got a done message. So I basically, I can go here and I can say set is done to true. And then I would have to basically, um, well, then it would just re-render the component, right? Because when you change state in a React component, it re-renders. So in this case, this would display 100 because we told React like, hey, force yourself to re-render and now everything works fine. but it's just, it just doesn't seem correct. This all seems so dirty just to do something really simple. And really, I'm just complaining about React at this point. I'm so close to switching over to Svelte or Vue or something else because I'm so tired of dealing with this extra like convoluted way of doing something super simple. Like this is a super simple use case, but the fact that we have to use effect just to like do something like this, I'm just complaining. You can call me out in the comments. Um, I think there's some additional complexity that React brings to the table that the average layman coder, which I consider myself an average coder, it's just too much complexity for something so simple that we need to solve. Okay, so this seems hacky too. Like we shouldn't have to keep track of current in a, a ref and then have to have some weird like is done thing. Um, so another approach you could do is keep that state variable. In fact, let me undo a lot of this stuff. I'm gonna go back to the other approach where I have a state variable and we're gonna increment that every time. And you might say this, this whole example is just kind of convoluted and dumb, but I'm just stressing that this is a really basic thing I'm trying to solve in code, but the amount of code needed to make this work is so mind boggling that it's just so frustrating. So if I keep the same approach where we have like this hack where we update some random state variable, uh, what we could do as well is we could have another use effect and basically just listen to an in, is done is completed. And then also you have to put count here because you want to do something with the count when it's done. You can do this. You can add a third effect, which fires whenever done goes to true and whenever count changes. And this is another approach that you can do to do this. <laughs> all right. So with all that being said, um, I don't know what the best approach is, honestly. I, I just, all of this seems like so much complexity. I know I kind of said that already multiple times in this video. But I watch other people like make React videos and I read blog posts and I don't feel like anyone actually talks about how garbage this is, like how, how confusing this is. And especially as a beginner, since most of my videos are for beginners and like teach you how to code, this stuff is just not intuitive. Um, if you did this in Vue, it would be super straightforward because you just basically listen for the socket. Everything is like a reference basically in Vue. Everything is mutatable. So like you wouldn't have to worry about this weird race conditions where you're changing state, you have to wait for React to actually re-render it, you have to like listen for when stuff changes. This whole thing seems like a hack. That is done to true seems like a hack. Um, another interesting thing that I was trying to do was instead of having this effect here, and then instead of doing set is done and all this stuff, I added a helper function called get value. And this is like the biggest hack ever, but for anyone watching this video, it's kind of good to understand like what this is doing. This is going to take in a state setter function 
and it returns a promise that basically calls the state setter and resolves the value of that um, and then returns s. In fact, I don't even know why I'm returning s. I could just resolve. Wait, I could just resolve here. I think this is all I need to do. So this is a little hack where basically I wanted to get the latest and greatest value of the the value uh, of the state value of count, but I didn't want to have to like call the setter and then have it be like a callback function and then do more stuff. So instead, I could just say const count. I'll say like latest count is equal to await get value of set count. Super hacky. I would not recommend doing this, but I'm just kind of like playing around with some ideas. But notice that when I print this out, this will actually this will print out 100, right? This works fine, although it just disappeared on the page. Why did the count just go away? Um, oh, I know why. I know why I was returning S, because you have to, let me do this. Resolve S, return S, like this. So this is a setter, so anything that you return has to actually be the new value. So let's go ahead and do that again. So know what, notice that everything prints out 100, everything works fine. Um, so my comp now I wouldn't recommend doing this, like I said, like this is just super hacky, but I do believe something like SolidJS, everything that, every time you need to get state, it's always a function call. It's never like some, some variable that could potentially be stale, it's just a function call. So if you wanted to get count in uh, SolidJS, I believe you just say count like this. And that'll always give you the latest value. So I don't know. Like I said, I'm so close to just switching over to something else. Um, I know you don't have to deal with effects that often, especially if you use like React Query or use some other type of like custom hook that handles a lot of this like lifecycle stuff. But I don't know. I'm just venting at this point. But there is, I will say there is something in React called a use event that they plan to release. Um, I don't think this is actually released yet. Call me out if I'm wrong. So I will say there is an RFC for this uh, use event hook, which I don't know if this is out or not. I don't think it is. But basically what it does is anytime you do use event, you have access to the latest value of state like this. So in this case, if I were to use like a use event here, um, yeah, I guess like here would be like my use event then I would always have access to the latest value of text or the latest value of count. I wouldn't have to worry about all this convoluted logic, which is pretty cool, but I do kind of wonder why, you know, a company that has millions of dollars is so slow to add new features to a framework. Um, I think they're worried that they're about to get replaced when you have all these other frameworks like SolidJS, uh, Svelte coming out, and they realize that their overly convoluted library is probably gonna start becoming like Angular where no one wants to use it anymore. So I don't know when this thing's gonna get released or if it ever will. When was this actually created? May 4th. And I, I know like I shouldn't just sit here and complain about frameworks, but I've used Svelte a little bit. I've used React a little bit. I mean, <laughs> I've used Angular in the past. I use React um, at my work currently full time and all in, on all of my YouTube videos. I've used Svelte and played around with that on side projects and I've used Vue and I used to make tutorial videos on Vue, but I will say that React is probably the most convoluted out of all of them. Like I do like JSX. I do like the way the templating is working. I do like the simplicity of like, I can just pull out a function over here and like make another component. But there is some warrant to like using Vue and using Svelte because they're just a lot more user friendly. Anyway, let me stop complaining before people come and burn me alive at the stake for bashing their sacred React library, but I'm at the point now that I'm like, I might just switch my content on YouTube to something else because I'm just so tired of dealing with this stuff. It's just not intuitive to me. Anyway, if you wanna join me Discord and uh, fight me about this, feel free to. Uh, my link should be in my description of this video for my Discord. Or if you wanna get help on anything in React, I am pretty uh, busy sometimes, so I don't really address all the questions I get on Discord anymore. But feel free to join my Discord and also feel free to leave a comment, subscribe, like, press the bell icon. If you want more videos like this in the future that help you become a better developer, just kind of like, um, you know, make you think outside the box a little bit. Anyway, have a good day and happy coding.